Hey mamas, welcome back to our channel where we talk about everything related to motherhood. I'm Andrea. And I'm Alana. And today we're going to talk about some of our favorite math manipulatives that you can use with your child. Number one, we love this clock. They come in smaller size for kids, but this big one, it's nice because it's easy to read and you could also teach several kids. Um, what's really nice is when you ask a child, for example, to show you four o'clock, they actually cannot move the hour time, so they could only move the minutes. So it just makes it a little easier for them to show it. Here it is. So even to get it back to 12 o'clock, like they're rotating the minute time. So it just comes in really handy for them because it's really hard when you're young to manage both of them and to make it point towards two different things instead of just moving the minute one over and over until you're at the right time. So for example, if you start with 11 o'clock, it's nice. You can just have them move it and then say, okay, what time is it? 12 o'clock, move it again, 60 minutes. What time is it? One o'clock, move it again, 60 minutes, two o'clock. So it just really, really helps visually. Number two is dice. These are a really fun way to switch things up. We just throw them on the ground. If you have one child, you can just throw one and ask them what number they see when it lands. If you have an older child who's learning how to add or subtract, you can have them throw both dice and subtract the three from the five. So there's plenty of ways to use these dice just to switch things up in your homeschool. Sure. The next three all help to develop number sense. Math link cubes come in really handy when you're trying to teach a child how to develop numbers. So for example, if you want them to put four together, it's nice for them to see that four is smaller than six. So it just really, really helps visually and it's really nice that they stick together and they're not just scattered on the table. What's really nice about these, again, you can create different numbers and then visually it helps them to get them in order from biggest to smallest. Then you can talk about what those numbers actually are. So like that. And again, they stay together. So that comes in really handy for a lot of these numbers. Sometimes you may want to use base 10 blocks. These come in handy when they're developing other numbers, like 16, when they already know that a 16 is made up of a 10, and then six of these single ones. Or 32, for example, when they know that it's made up of three tens and then two single ones. One of my favorite ways to introduce numbers is creating these little bean sticks, and they're sticks of 10. Um, the way I introduce it is I start off like the first day of kindergarten or if you want to start in first grade or even preschool, I start off with one single bean, I tell them it's day one, and then I take that single bean and I put it in the one spot. We do that all the way until day nine. And once we get to day nine, we have a little discussion on this cup only holds single beans. And so then I give them a popsicle stick and they create a stick of 10. And that stick of 10 lives in this little house. And so we do that over and over and over and we get to, you know, we go to 11 and 12 and all the way to 20. And again, when we get to 20, right before they create that next stick, we talked about this is a 10 and a nine and the next one, they'll create another stick. So now they're at 20 and we do that again all the way until we get to the 100th day of school. What I love about it is that the child is creating their own stick of 10 and it really emphasizes how to create numbers. So there's times when we even do little review games, like they'll be this number and they'll take them out and say, oh, there's three sticks of 10, what does that mean? This is 30 and they'll count the single beans and tell me it's 30 something and the actual number. The nice thing about these is that you can start in preschool and if you don't feel like they're grasping it, you can restart and redo it in kindergarten all the way to the 100th day. And I know a lot of families celebrate the 100th day of school, so it just comes in handy doing a little activity to lead that to that special day. Number six is an abacus. This is really good, again, just for developing number sense for young kids. It's a really good, fun, visual, hands-on way to learn. This abacus is really nice because it's colorful and so you can see that this is a group of 10, here's another group of 10. Some other versions of these will have five and five, so this would be a different color than this one and it really helps to show different groups and also to help with skip counting. So this one's actually new and if you notice, it's not split. What I'm going to be doing is taking a permanent marker and putting a line straight down this one and this one, which basically are the middle two. That helps the child to know that right in the middle is the group of five. So it just really helps. Instead of them trying to count to five and splitting it, they'll have the line and they'll be able to quickly go five, 10, 15, 20, and they'll know exactly where that middle is. Number seven is wrap-ups. These are really fun and really good for independent work when you want your child to do something on their own, maybe while you're working with another child. And so how you use these is you start right here at this number, it says seven. In the middle, it'll tell you what you have to do, so it would be minus one. So you start with seven here. So seven minus one equals six. 
and then you go down to the next problem, 4 minus 1 equals 3. Next problem would be 2 minus 1 equals 1. And what's really nice is this is self-correcting, so you can see back here, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but there are lines. And so it basically tells you if you've done something wrong or if you've missed any. Wrap-ups also come with different operations, so you can get division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, and it depends again on what level they are, but they could divide by ones, twos, threes, and it goes all the way to dividing by ten. And it's the same thing with addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Number eight are fraction pieces, and again, these are just really good visuals. And so here you have a whole a one, and you have these fraction pieces. This is one sixth, and so you can show them that one sixth. You add six pieces will equal one whole on the pie chart. And you can use a whiteboard to use these. You can just lay them down on the table. You can put these inside of a circle to show how they fill them in. So there's different ways you can use these. And the nice thing is they don't just come in the circles. They also come as a straight line. So here's one whole, and they come in different parts. So for example, here's a half and a half and they'll you can discuss how two halves make a whole or you can discuss how three thirds also make a whole and they come with a lot of other ones i think all the way to one sixteenth. number nine is play money you can use any play money that you have you can use some that you might have from like a monopoly game board and these are just really fun they can use them to play grocery store and they can pay the cashier they can give each other change. It's just a really good way for them to practice adding, subtracting, and managing money. Number 10 is a 10 frame. It comes in really handy for the child to be able to create two pairs of numbers that equal 10. It's also nice when a child is adding. If they have, for example, the number 6 and they're trying to add another 6, it comes in handy for them to visually see that the 10 chart is full, therefore they need another one, so it's over 10. This is a little extra that we created when our first two children were learning pairs of numbers that equal to 10. We had them create a little rainbow, and then we had them pair one with nine, and two with eight, and three with seven. So it was just nice for them to get a visual, and then on the back side, we had them rewrite them. So they can learn that one and nine make 10, two and eight make 10, three and seven make 10, and so forth. And we also had them write these numbers on the side so that when you pair them up, again, we talked about the pairs. So I would say like, what goes with nine? Who's nine's best friend? You turn it into so many different games. Or who's, the, who's eight's best friend? And so forth. It really reemphasizes creating the number 10 before moving on to bigger numbers. So those are all of our favorite math manipulatives for younger kids. If you found anything in this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any other fun math manipulatives that we forgot to add in this video, please drop them down in the comments below. And please subscribe so you don't miss our next video.